In this video, I want to talk about a slight modification which we can make to a random walk, which is called a random walk with drift. And the way in which this series works mathematically is that we have xt is equal to xt minus 1 plus our error term et, where et here is still iid with a mean of 0 and a variance of sigma squared. And the only way we modify this is by adding some an amount alpha to that. And for our purposes, perhaps we can think about alpha as being positive, but in principle, you can have either a positive or a negative number here. So what about the properties of a random walk with drift? Well, just like the same way we worked out the properties for a random walk, let's use back substitution to help us derive some of those properties. So if we first of all substitute in for x t minus 1, we know that x t minus 1 is just going to be alpha plus x t minus 2 plus e t minus 1 plus e t. Okay, and if we were to go again, we could have that that would be equal to alpha plus alpha, and then substituting in for x t minus 2, we would then from that term get another alpha plus x t minus 3 plus e t minus 2 plus e t minus 1 plus e t. So hopefully now you can see that there is quite a definitive pattern here. And if we were to continue up until the first ever point of our series, we would find that x t would be equal to alpha times t plus, now we're going to have x0, which is the first time in our series, or the first value of x in our series at time 0 rather, Plus, now we're just going to have a sum term where we sum up all the error terms. So we've got the sum from i equals 0 to t minus 1 of e t minus i. Okay, so this is a way of decomposing x t into its various um, error terms and its initial value of x t, which is x0. So what do the mean and the variance of this particular process look like? Well, if we take the mean of this process, we have that the expectation of xt is just going to be equal to, well, this first term here is just deterministic, it's just going to be alpha t. And if we assume that the expectation of x0 is 0, or x0 is fixed at 0, then that term doesn't contribute anything, so we can forget about that. And the expectations operator just comes out with 0 for this last term, because each of these error terms on their own is 0. So we can see straight away that this particular time series is non-stationary in mean because of the fact that its mean actually depends on time. Well, what about the variance of our process xt? Well, the way to work out the variance is to realise that this first term doesn't vary because it's just deterministic. Second term similarly doesn't vary because we're just fixing it. The only term which contributes variance is actually this term which I've crossed out here, which is this sum of the error term here. So the variance of xt is equal to the sum from i equals 0 to t minus 1 times the variance of e t minus i. And the reason I haven't got any cross terms in here is because of the fact that our errors are independent of one another. And if we were to write out this sum in full, we could see that there would actually be t um, variances. So we just have t times the variance of e t minus i, which is t times sigma squared. So it's quite obvious to see that not only is the mean non-stationary, also its variance is non-stationary. So this is very much a non-stationary time series. So how would this time series look if we were to draw a graph of it? So if on the horizontal axis we have t and on the vertical we have xt, then we could sort of think about our process. This would be the line xt equals alpha t might look something like that. So that's just a deterministic trend which I'm using to draw this graph. So this is just x equals alpha times time because we know that the mean is always going to be around that sort of value. But our process, what it will look like is it would have some sort of runs of going above that and then it would go below that and then it might continue something like that. So that would be a realization of a particular random walk with drift and notice that the meaning behind drift becomes quite apparent once I graph it. Essentially this alpha term here determines the fact that this series tends to drift upwards. 
it doesn't stay around zero like the other sorts of random walk did, or it didn't even cross zero like the other random walks did rather.